All righty, folks, you have undoubtedly seen or heard about uh, Jerome Powell's Fed presser last week. Many of you heard about his 60-minute uh, discussion on Sunday. And we have had some late breaking news here Monday morning that we've got to break down with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? I'm excited. This is uh, the world is changing from a rate perspective here in front of our eyes. Oh, like, yeah, if you go to Thursday versus uh, Tuesday, it's it's a vastly different story. So let's jump in the time machine and go back the farthest, which will be in this example to last Wednesday. Jerome Powell and his cronies, no rate hike, no big surprise. Press release, blah, 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 no big surprise. Jerome Powell in front of a microphone. What did you take away? I took I, I took this away as just like an hysterical conversation. So <laughs> <laughs> just hysterical. It, it, it was. It was. So he was rosy colored glasses the entire time. All good. This that. So a couple things that he changed. So yep. before we talked about a lot about hey unemployment has to pick up in order for inflation to come down. Well, he took that back. He totally yep. reverted course. Doesn't have that. to happen. Yeah. Doesn't have to happen. He's like, look, look, it's happening. It's happening. You know, unemployment's not picking up and inflation is coming down. And this does fly in the face of conventional economic wisdom and monetary policy. And so, but I think that they've done this, this successfully thus far that they're like, hey, we can do this and it can continue. So that was great. He also said, unequivocally, literally said, this is a good economy which yeah. is something that he had not said necessarily in the past. Yeah, he's been hesitant then, to say. Yeah. yeah, And then he just delivered the gut shot of all gut shots. And the best thing about this gut shot is it was like he couldn't wait to say it fast enough. <laughs> he, he couldn't He couldn't wait. So his, his, his line was, and I'll butcher this a little bit, but the quote was something to the context of, I doubt that the committee feels confident enough in the inflation data that we're seeing to cut interest rates in March. And the, the question didn't necessarily warrant that specific of an answer. <laughs> he was just waiting for someone to ask something around those lines of context for him to blurt that out of his mouth. And the market just tanked on that news. The market yeah. had been drifting upwards from where it started at the beginning of the conference to then just blew out the bottom side on that. And it, it, it's funny to me. Well, let, let me just shut up, let you talk, and then I'll re revert back on something. So all of those were great. The one that got me the most is where he talked about housing. Okay. And he basically said, we have not and we are not going after home prices. Our tools are not adequate for that, but we are impacting rent, right? Basically, you know, we're not going after the asset price in, in verse we are going after rent. And I thought that was interesting because if you flash back, I guess it was a year ago, it might have been 15 months ago, there was a lot of crash bros and doomers saying, Jerome Powell's coming after home prices. Watch out. He's talking about this and that. I'm like, no, he's not. He's not saying that. He's going to jack up interest rates, which is going to crush transactions. Sure. But he doesn't have the tools for price. Nobody believed me. Now Jerome Powell's like, dude, I can't impact prices. It's not my thing. I don't got those tools. You, you literally called that one as good as anybody in any industry did. You said, listen, at the end of the day, what you're going to see is a crash in real estate transactions exactly and yeah. and uh you made that evident to me um specifically and then you took us through that spreadsheet and you showed all the backward looking data and said listen yeah. i'm not making this up this isn't my feeling this is what's happened throughout history which is what We've a good been economist here before does. <laughs> right right the thing the thing that i thought was just hysterical about the entirety of what the market's been doing is jerome powell may not have been so blatant in the past to say Okay, at this upcoming meeting, we are not cutting interest rates. Right. But he has all but said that now for the past six months. And the market continues to say, you're a liar. You're a liar. And, and then he came out and literally said, listen, children, get this clear. We are not cutting rates at the next at the next meeting. And it was just like, okay, this was a shot across the bow. He said it 19 times in very convoluted ways and any educated person that watched that that wasn't just looking for hopium out of the meeting yeah. took that away but that was the line yeah no i agree i agree uh and what i saw after wednesday is the chances of a march rate cut went from as high as 83 percent or whatever to now sub 20 i don't know what they're at this morning but i bet they're lower this morning uh so the, that was wednesday that the thing that was ridiculous to me is that thursday the probability was 45 percent for a rate cut 
I'm like, what, what, what else does he need to do here? Why aren't you taking this seriously? And it's not like this stuff doesn't reprice like that. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It does. Yeah. So that was crazy. So let's go to Sunday. Uh, Sunday, uh, Jerome Powell was on 60 Minutes. It was actually a pre-recorded interview. It was actually recorded the day before the presser, but released on Sunday. He said a lot of the same things. Uh, I do think there was one interesting topic that I have not heard Powell address specifically, and that was basically uh, our politicians are spending too much money. Our debt is growing faster than our economy, and that is not sustainable. So I was I was encouraged that he went after that. And I think that is also having some impact because, again, you and I are geeking out about the Fed every six weeks. But the average American doesn't even know the Fed meets. Right. They don't right. they don't understand. Right. But they may watch 60 minutes or they may have somebody in the family that watches 60 minutes. So when Jerome Powell goes on one of those shows, I think more people get involved. Yep. And they probably didn't like what he had to say yesterday. Yep. It hits a broader audience. There's no doubt about it. There is one thing that people can understand. Um, I don't mean to say that in a punitive way. It's easy to comprehend this. If you are an individual, right. you make $100,000, you spend one hundred fifty. it doesn't work. Yeah. And that is, what, that is what he laid out there in spades. And it's like, we just don't understand this in Washington. We have this printing press that you can continue to turn on. But at some point, retribution hits and you have to pay those debts. And as a government, as you know, an entity like that, you do have to pay debt. So there's three ways of doing so. The first one is you grow your way out of it and yep. tax receipts pick up. And we're really hoping that that's a good percentage of the way out of this thing, right? We're the hoping. second way is you inflate your way out. You pay down those debts with a less powerful dollar. And then the third way is one that nobody wants to see, you default. And you yeah. say, I'm not paying back these obligations that I have. And throughout the history of this country, that has never taken place. And if that takes place, that will be an ugly scenario. So don't oh. look at that one and say, hey, let's just do that, throw our arms yeah. up. No, because then you don't get more money. After you. After someone gives you a loan, you don't pay them back. You don't go back to them and give them another loan. No, absolutely not. Well, and then let's talk about Monday morning. I think there's a lot of things going on this morning, uh, kind of follow through from last week. And I would argue picking up. And I think. I think a lot of it has to do with ISM services. So you know this, but for the audience, we typically get two reports from ISM, one manufacturing, one services. Manufacturing probably historically has gotten more press. But when you look at our economy today, it's a fraction of the service industry. Correct. So I don't know if you saw ISM service this morning, but I'll, I'll, break, you, I'll break it down for you. It came in at 53.4. You and I both know that above 50, good, below 50, bad. Uh, what you may not know is it's up from last month, which was 52. It was above expectations. But most importantly, and again, services is the biggest part of our economy. What did it say? There has been a pickup in orders. There's been a pickup in employment. And there's been a pickup in prices. So that doesn't scream rate cuts to me. There isn't that much out there that does scream rate cuts to me. No, but you're 100% right. And you look at this and... People had this realization during COVID, like, hey, it is the experiences that we care about. It is not necessarily the flat screen TV on the wall. Now, that that did last for a very short period of time where people were stayed at home and, and they had to buy that stuff to, to right. didn't have but to you buy never, it. You, you don't buy it again, right? You, right. Yeah, once you don't done, buy it again. Done. Exactly. Services don't last. You continue to go out to restaurants. You continue to get on that plane. You continue to go on vacation. And people had this realization that, like, that is what I missed and that is what life is all about. And that is also the whole millennial population is, hey, I don't give a damn about a BMW. I want to go on vacations with my family. And I'm not saying whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent, but that is certainly the mentality. And that is leading to services being such a huge component of now where our economic you know, forecast and, and, and growth lies. Yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about in this episode before we get on to the next one, which is the difference between a seven and an eight-figure net worth individual. Stay tuned for that one. Is Have you seen Trueflation uh, in the last 48 hours or so? I haven't. I haven't. Where is it at now? 1.4. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. So one of the things that I've been playing with is I still believe that the Fed will cut rates without a recession, without unemployment, simply because of the restrictive nature. So I want to run through some very quick math with you. I want you to check it. I want you to poke holes in it, okay? Yep. Yep. So, so today, 
you know, when you parse Fed speak, it is my belief that they want to maintain a restrictive nature of about 200 basis points, yep. roughly. Yep. So today, CPI, 3.4. You add 200 basis points, you get 5.4, which is right in the sweet spot of today's Fed funds of five and a quarter to five and a half. Correct. Yep. Good so far, right? Perfect. So now let's swap out inflation because CPI 3.4 is back with looking stupid shelter numbers in there, blah, 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 blah. Let's take out 3.4 and throw in 1.4. Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize that's 200 basis points lower. So yep. if, if inflation is truly 1.4, and if the Fed wants to maintain 200 basis points, isn't it then logical that there could be upwards of eight rate cuts that are possible? Yeah, I, I, I think that that's... Um logical. I don't think that's at all possible, um, but that is logical. I do follow your logic there. I think one of the things that we're struggling with right now, and, and Jerome Powell spoke about this the other day, is he said, listen, we don't know what restrictive is. Right. We we don't know exactly what that number is. And this isn't 20 years ago where adjustable rate mortgages were a bigger percentage of things. Right. Um, people have fixed debt now. They don't have things that adjust with interest rates going higher. And it just hasn't had as meaningful an impact as right. what the market thought it would be, as the Fed thought it would be looking backwards either. Um, one of the other areas of the market that Jerome spoke about on on uh, Wednesday of last week was the goods number of inflation. So yeah. we've been experiencing pretty massive disinflationary pressures on the goods front because the supply chain's correcting and itself, so And some way. deflation, some deflation. And yeah, there's deflation in places, no doubt about it, um, on the goods front. But he said, listen, that, that pressure isn't going to continue back southward. So that's right. something where they're they're nervous about that. I think they're nervous about energy. There's um, some real outstanding question marks about geopolitical things and and energy and For oil sure. prices on that front. But no, your your logic is is, is certainly there. Um, eight rate cuts would be. Uh, it, it's funny. I, I look at the other side of this and say, until if and until you see an impact materially on the economy, or can at least foresee a material yeah. impact on the economy. There's not much reason to cut interest rates for fear of the 1970s where you cut too soon and it reverberates yeah. back up. Yeah. So let me be very clear about this. I do not want, I do not help for, I'm not calling for eight rate cuts. I was just playing with the logic yeah, yeah, yeah. because again, I think eight rate cuts is at the extreme. However, we've also heard the Fed say we're going to have three. Yep. I think it's very likely they could have four or five because of that kind of throughput. Because again, maybe 200 is not enough. But I have to tell you, 400, which if they kept it at five and a quarter, that would be a problem, I would imagine. That's restrictive. Yeah. That, yeah. That. <laughs> Taylor, where can people find you? Awesome stuff, Michael. Um, yeah, follow us at Life Goal Investments. We're on both Instagram and TikTok. Our stuff is 60 seconds a day, just trying to get you all more educated on the, the markets, finance, economy, et cetera. I, it, what you do daily is truly impressive, man. Thank you very oh, much. You're the man.